Hey guys, welcome back to The Modeling Edge. I'm Nick, and I hope you guys are liking these videos. I know that, oh, I'm sorry I hit the camera that much, but I know in the previous video for just basic detail painting was really long, uh, the audio wasn't so great, and I know you couldn't see some stuff just due to my lighting situation, so I apologize. But uh, if you are enjoying these, and it is helping you guys paint, uh, just let me know in the comments section below, and I'll do a lot of other techniques and things like that. But for now, I'm just gonna do a little painting tutorial, like how to do bases. And the reason I'm doing it is because I get asked this a lot, like how did you base your mini uh, in the store? And this is only going to be applicable for these pre-built uh, Warhammer bases from Citadel models. I do a completely different set of process, uh, uh, just sculpting, different products, using grass, using pigments. I'll be using some pigments on this, but it's a little bit different here. Uh, so this is just a real quick tutorial, only applicable to these bases. And so first things first, what we're going to do is get a base color on the dirt. We're gonna try not to paint anything or other than the dirt, but again, that is helpful if we do just because, obviously it'll blend it into the surroundings. To do that, we're going to be using German Camo Medium Brown and Rhinox Hide. We're gonna do a mix of both because I don't want it to be so dark like Rhinox. But also, we're gonna be doing dry brushes of um, that Camo Brown later in the video to get our final color. So, we're gonna need something to distinguish it. Also, we'll be mixing a lot of colors for this and just like my other videos, hopefully you can see it, I will be using my wet palette. Actually, you know what, I'll keep the wet palette on screen. But yeah, this is just like a 50-50 mix, just because Citadel paints are so thick and the camo medium brown from Vallejo has a really strong pigment, which is nice. So the two complement each other, at least for what we're doing. And in these instances, I will be using, well, I was going to use the base brush, but I don't know where it is. Oh, it's right here. Uh -huh. So just Citadel's medium base brush. And just like with the Marines, I'm just going to start putting some color down. Now I'm going to try my best not to get any paint over the edge and then we're going to take a smaller brush and paint that now as you can see for the smaller details i am covering them up almost 100 percent right now um obviously if you can avoid it go for it like i'm going to try to miss a lot of that banner there this is more about just getting a tonal baseline down with the browns and then from there, dry brushing and detail painting will help distinguish those things more. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy these videos. Um, if you're watching this but didn't see the other two, please go back to my channel. I basically walk you through how to, or do my best to walk you through one of my many airbrushing painting techniques. For, that I use for Warhammer models. One of my uh, most popular that people ask me about at work. And I work at a hobby shop, so it's not just like coworkers being like really savvy with what I do. And the other one is just how I do detail painting. Now, if you wanna see me do a more in-depth detail video on like say my six hour long miniatures and how I go about doing everything. And that'll make more sense if you watch that video. Then just let me know in the comment section below and I will uh, start filming one. But for now, it's just gonna be these basics. I think next up in this miniature painting series is going to be unit painting. I have some Cadian infantry, some guardsmen I'm going to paint and just showing you just another way that the airbrush helps augment the toolbox for painting. And then another video I've been wanting to do is how I do my commission painting. And that's not like a, uh, unless, again, if you want it to be something like that, just let me know in the comment section below. But it's not going to be how I got into commission painting and how I run it. 
it's just going to be these really quick techniques that I developed for doing paint jobs in under an hour, but fully painted miniatures. Like, how do you go from priming a mini to a full painted mini in an hour and all you do is dry brush? If you want to know how to do stuff like that in your D&D &D player who just is looking for quick ways to make the campaign, just fill it in. Check out those videos in the future, but for now, that's it. We're going to do one of these. I might do a second one, but it was just to get that base there. Because like I said, we're going to do a lot of dry brushing on this afterwards. And we're going to be dry brushing all the stone elements. And then detail painting these smaller elements in here. Like this key, or I'm sorry, this cross, purity seal, this bone. There's parts of the building here. So just a lot of other stuff. But for right now, that's it. Okay, so next is dry brushing and my basic stuff. <clears throat> We're just going to be using Vallejo's Camo Brown. And so if you watched before this, my um, detail painting tutorial, I already explained dry brushing, but I will do it again. You're going to need a flat bristle brush like this. You're going to get paint just on the edges like so. And then... You're going to wipe most of that off. This is supposed to help us just get the highlights in it, like I explained there. The last video, the thumbnail test. That's pretty good. And so all we're going to do is, like I just explained, just going to, and hopefully it'll focus up, hit the edges. And we're just going to do a light dusting. Now you can always, and I probably will have to, use a different color. It looks like our mix here is mostly going to be camo brown. And so to change that up a bit, we're going to add a few drops of German beige, which is another color I like using for anything weather related ground related fur when you see the dnd video it is just these are my main colors are these browns and there is a reason for that not only are they great colors they add a lot of nice depth and tonal variation to the mini and so just like in the detail painting thing we're not going for anything specific here with these colors we're just trying to make something that's interesting to the eye and hopefully now we have a more noticeable difference. And we're going to further augment this dry brushing with pigments. Right now, we just want to give off the illusion oh, I'm sorry, that's happening off camera, isn't it? But yeah, you can see how some things are getting highlighted now and things are becoming a little bit more defined. And that two-tone color on all the raised edges there is what makes dry brushing so useful and I will show you that again because that is going to be the main technique for doing quick bases like this I don't really paint too many details now we are going to do detail painting on this but not anything crazy we're going to mix some ceramite white with some Vallejo black primer to get the stone gray color that I'm going to use on most of actually all of these details. I'm going to try if we can, but it's not important if it does mix. Again, all this stuff is going to get toned together with pigments. So pigments are something that I went over in my last video as well, but you'll get an opportunity to see them at work here, hopefully, in a few minutes. Really great tools. But again, clean off your brush. You want to take off almost all the paint from the brush. Obviously, leave a little bit to catch the raised edges, and then
dry brushing not only creates a nice stony look, it's because of the effect of the way the paint is applied. It leaves a lot of porous sections in the paint job, which is a plus here in this situation. But it is also leaving a nice gradient of shadow. Which is why we do dry brushing. It is a really fast way. Of adding color to highlighted areas and picking out those areas. While leaving a lot of the remaining color either in the shadow or in this case the brown underneath. Which is nice because it ties things together and so there is the stone on the base done and like I said these things are pretty pretty quick and we're going to mix some same thing again all dry brushing so I suggest getting a small dry brush and no this is not how I do most of my bases but it is how I do really quick Citadel ones. Basic colors for the base. And then quick dry brushing with some detail painting here and there. So again, using our dry brush and this time using white. Again, we're going to mix it with German beige. And this is the same mixture if you watched the last video that I used for making my purity seal paper. To take it and just lay it down on the banners here. This is going to be a little bit more controlled than on the stone and on the base itself just because we have so few areas of this color. So just do be careful to only be getting it where it's needed. Oops, sorry, I really cannot see where my camera is. But there's one section done. Oops, that was too much paint. And so there's those two colors. And now from here on out, everything on the base will be detail painted. But we are already, for the most part, done. Another quick tip, so I'll do the bones real quick on this as well, is dry brushing is the same method that we use for doing edge highlighting, only less controlled. What I mean by that is, same theory applies here. That, that, that applies to edge highlighting. It's a little bit of paint. Applied lightly over certain areas. So for example, all the bones, like if I wanted to pick out this bone right here, I'm just gonna take the edge of the brush
and just pick out the edges. Just like that. It does not have to be perfect. As a lot of this stuff is going to be blended back in with the pigments. Just to tie everything together. But in case you don't want to wait for pigments, you can always touch up colors. that so now we're going to let that dry for the most part and we'll come back with some details of pigments and then that's it and I might add some gold to the statue as well alrighty so for the detail painting portion of this and hopefully you can see the base a little bit better from here I'm going to use my favorite, as I already used in the Marine, Richard Beard Gold. Using my Kalinsky brush, all we're going to do is hopefully you can see this now. We're just going to start picking out some of the finer details. Like I've been saying with this whole base, it does not have to be perfect or complete. And the reason for that is pigments are going to help tie everything together. And so will washes. But we want everything to be a part of the environment. So we don't want too many things to stand out against it. And I am going to show you, or actually you probably already saw it. No, never mind. I won't show you it here, but... In the previous video, when everything was done, I compared this miniature to the very first version of this miniature I did. It's just a start painting marine. So, comes with the base. And, um, I was doing a lot of armor work at the time. That I am no longer, well, I still do armor. I still do skill armor, skill modeling. But it's a very different world with a lot of heavy weathering and a lot of realistic stuff. For Warhammer nowadays, I do not do that. Just being real careful here to apply his gold halo. And then I might actually, you know what, I'm going to make the sword gold as well. And so there is the gold parts of this base. And then we're going to use a lead belcher, which I don't have on my workbench right now, just to paint this armored crate here. Let's 
that's in the center. And some of, so for the stone masonry on the skull side, I'm going to use lead belcher as well to break up that into the definitive metal plate there. And my lead belcher is not my favorite metallic. A lot of Warhammer guys would really like it. It's a really weak metallic, to be quite honest with you. And that's why I like using it for things like this. Compared to my chrome or other paints, it's not too great. But that subtle effect really helps us out here. Because it's a very grim, dark metal. We're just going to pick out like this box. And a wash or two will help that, but also we're going to cover the box in chromium. Again, all of which will be worn down with pigments. It also is important to remember with detail painting that you can control the flow of the paint into specific shadows if you so desire to do that. So there's lead belcher on that. And like I said, this time I'll probably use a layer brush actually. And you're just going to be painting the little plates around the skulls. Not the skulls themselves. Those I still want to be masonry. Just like on the marine detail painting, it's no different here. You're using the flat edge of the brush, not the actual tip, because you don't want to overload the surface. You're gently just pulling the color down into recessed areas. This will help you get smoother looking bases and smoother looking details. Yeah, on my, um, when you go back to the other video, and if you haven't, I do encourage you to watch it. If you don't want to see how to just do basic detail painting, at least skip to the end to see this base compared to the other one. That is the difference between a fantasy miniature base and the way that I do them and my actual modeling. Most of this stuff, the detail is so muddled on them because it's a heavily weathered aspect of... The world around it so a lot of rust a lot of dirt a lot of scratches and now in that particular piece nothing was really set in stone nothing was really straight edged it's not how i did weathering it wasn't hard edged it was all kind of blended together the reason you don't want to do that on these bases i realize is because they're so small that it just annihilates all the detail and then instead of becoming more interesting looking and more realistic looking becomes a little bit muddled. So now we're just gonna do pigments, washes, that sort of thing. Bring this base a little bit more cohesive. Oh, wait, hold on, before I do that. And this isn't technically a wet blend, but this is what you would do for a wet blend since the paint is not fully dried yet. I just wanna add some highlights of chrome. I mean, I don't want them to stand out on the edge of the paint. And so as the lead belcher is drying, this Vallejo chrome will 
seep into it a little bit and provides a smoother transition. Now it's not going to be a true wet blend like I just said. Now all I'm going to do is take a much brighter silver and just highlight details. Like that right there. As you can see in certain lighting, you can definitely tell that they're different silver now. But it's blended pretty nicely together already just because the paint is still wet. And so now we're done. That is it. That's all I do for my bases when they're basic like this. Just in color breaking down, tied together with pigments. And the reason I wait to the end for pigments is not only because I want to bring all these colors together, but when I mount the marine, as you've already seen, it ties him into the base as well. Okay, so at this point we've added a wash. And I did that off camera, but you could honestly be done with the project at this stage. If you wanted to blend things some more and add a little bit of different details all over, you could do some more dry brushing, some detail painting, another wash in a different color, uh, like a rust wash on the metal or something like that. For my project, what I will be doing instead is using dry pigments just to tie it in. This is the last step. I'm using Vallejo Burnt Umber. Uh, if you watch the Marine video, I used ammo by MIG gun metal pigments on the Marine's weapons. They work the same exact way, even though they are two different types of pigments. But if you didn't watch that video, I will show you now their powdered pigment. That's it. It's the same thing you would get off of pastels or pencils. Some people use weathering pencils, some people use pastels. This is just raw pigment. And the way you get paint is by adding this to an acrylic medium or an oil-based medium or something like that and you get color. So we are just foregoing the paint step. They're going straight on with pigments. Now I love using pigments as a tool. I'll show you why. They work a lot like dry brushing but they add a little bit more depth and a 3D blend depending on how you apply them. I don't put bonder on mine, which would turn them into a wash or like an oil wash or an acrylic pin wash. I keep mine dry. And the reason for that is I like the sandy look. But all I'm going to do is just pick out detail all over. And unlike dry brushing, which we were doing a couple of colors and places, and the uh, wash I used was a pin wash, I only wanted to pin some places. I'm going to just keep the pigments low on the base. So I'm not going to like try and cover everything in brown. But I'm going to move them around most of the base. In kind of a logical manner for where dirt would build up. Like over that cross there. Over the tapestry and over... This statue. And we are not losing all the colors, but it is blending everything together into a part of this environment. Then you just blow the excess off. Look at them a little bit and just clean it off the edge there. A great way to seal in pigments when you want to preserve that 3D effect is hairspray. So right now, that is the base looks like with pigment. There is a subtle layer of brown over everything that just ties it a little bit into the actual base. However, for the metallic stuff in the light, you can still see it very well. If I bring it up close, you will notice that the skulls, especially that one, are a little bit dirtier. It's a little different. I will be doing another round of pigment when I put the marine on just to tie him into the base. Actually, I'll do that now for this video. 
So again, if you watched the marine video, you've already seen this, but if you wanna know how I did it, it's the same way I applied pigment to the base. So I take our marine who is just, you know, walking around the base, and again, I keep it low and I keep it just to the parts that would have pigment on and that would have dust thrown on him as he walks through the shattered remains of whatever poor imperial outpost this was. Oh, they don't really send marines to outposts. It's probably a core mining facility or something ridiculous. And I'm just going to continue to add pigment over places. And the thing I like about it, other than dry brushing, is it doesn't add a highlight to parts, but rather a dusty film. And the reason I like that is because, like on the metal, it allows all this metallic detail to shine through when it gets in the right light. But at the same time, you know that it's dirty, just like real metal would be. So it's a little bit dull compared to the rest of the marine or the rest of the base, but not at all is it a different color entirely. Oops, sorry, keep taking them off camera. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. And that's how you use pigments. And so hopefully this video helped you learn how to do just quick bases. Now, before I go, I will say, and if you want to see this video, just let me know in the comment section below so I know to add it to the series. I do a lot of different stuff when it comes to big bases for big character models or HQ models or anything like that. For example, while the same basic techniques are still there, the way I did this base here is far different from how I built up this Necron base, which I completely sculpted from scratch or even this base here, which again is a little bit more involved. So if you want to learn how to do actual like full on bases like these guys, just let me know and I will do more in depth videos. But for now, just for the pre-built ones, that's where you go with it. And I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe and go check out the rest of the videos in the series. Leave any comments and any suggestions help. So if you didn't like the video, if you found some things to be unhelpful or there were other techniques you wanted to see explored, just let me know and the comments as well. Because I'm just really trying to feel out what is going to be most interesting for you guys as the viewers. But as always, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.